Deku had a monster creation quirk. Part 2. The Awakening. Let's begin, now shall we? You see that Midoriya has just woken up. He's decided, hmm, what am I going to do today? He goes out of his room. He walks down the stairs. And he sees his family as usual at the dinner table. He just walks by, goes to his... Goes to the fridge, gets out a, a soda, and well, some leftovers that he had from yesterday, and he just walks out of the house. All of them still eating like as if he never appeared, and Midoriya just looks back at them with disgust, doesn't even recognize his existence. If he disappeared, they just wouldn't even say a thing. They wouldn't even notice. And he was damn right, they wouldn't. He continued walking out of out of his house after he had all of his well lunch and his drink that he proceeded to drink before getting there. Once he got to his now middle school, it was about the end of middle school, about to enter high school. Majori had dreaded his life. He dreaded how he's treated. He was called the Corkless Monster. Because he always read books that pertailed to monsters. He was always interested in them. They were always misunderstood. They were always neglected. But somehow they still had some semblance of life. They had some semblance or purpose. But when he looks into his own life, he finds nothing. But just chains of regrets. Despair. He idolizes the monsters he reads sometimes. But he still idolizes heroes more, because they save other people very quickly, efficiently. They wouldn't let go of them. They won't they let them die. They, they always save the day. They always help them. And he wants to become just like one. And the thing is, they all know he wants to still become a hero. That's why they bully him even more. A Corkless kid becoming a hero is impossible, but not just any Corkless kid, it's the monster freak, is what they all say. But Midoriya doesn't really care about this. And he's thinking about this before he walks into his middle school. He walks in the classroom, just to notice that, well, Bakugo blew up his desk again, and threw out his chair. So he has to stand in class again. He goes to where his desk was, and he stands in front of it. Everyone laughs at him, and just looks at him. Until the teacher walks in, throws the assignments in the air, and says, I will give you your aptitude test, but I know all of you want to become heroes. You can all become great heroes. Except for one person. And he looks at Midoriya and smiles. Midoriya looks back at him, gives him a bone-chilling smile. And this scares the shit out of the teacher. The teacher's visibly panicked, because Midoriya never smiles. What's he up to? And, well, the teacher just gulps. Everyone can hear it, and they're looking at Midoriya, think he's smiling. This pisses off Bakugo, because Bakugo, he remembers the day where he got beaten up. He doesn't know how the nerve did it. What happened? Neither does Midoriya himself. And he doesn't frankly care. He just wants this to all be over with. He just wants to move out of his house. Get away from his family that neglects him, abuses him, or just mistreats him overall. He just wants away from all the pain and suffering. But little did he know, the pain and suffering didn't want to move away from him. <sighs> he was quite attracted to this young man. And the teacher looks through his files after he picks him up and says, Wait, Midoriya, you wanted to go into the UA? Well, with your grades, you could do it, but I don't think you can really become a hero with, well, no quirk. And the fact that you're overall useless and can't really do anything for yourself. I mean, if you really can't save yourself, could you really save anyone else? And he just laughs at Midoriya, and everyone else joins in. Midoriya isn't laughing or smiling. He just looks at them with a deadpan face, and he just says, well, if I can't become a hero, I don't think any of you can. 
You're all here criticizing me and encouraging me not to become a hero. Not out of care or anything like that. Just because if I become a hero and I'm quirkless and you guys can't become a hero, that'd mean I'm better than all of you that have quirks. That even though I'm supposedly powerless, I'm better than you. And that's the reason why you don't want me to actually enroll in UA or even attempt because you know I'll make it. And they all are silent and they look at him with a hateful glare. Midoriya just softly chuckles. And once the bell rings, he's about to walk out. But Bakugo grabs him by the back of the collar. He throws him to the back of the classroom. And he explodes right in front of him. And does an explosive right hook to the face. And starts rapidly beating him with five other goons helping. And they're jumping Midoriya. Midoriya doesn't do anything to defend himself. He doesn't block. He doesn't care. This happens to him all the time anyway. Why should he care? It's just a little pain. <sighs> to him, it's more like pain and him are married. <sighs> because he's always with it. And it's always with him. And Midoriya just decides to go ahead and get up while he's getting beaten. Because, well, even though he doesn't really feel that much anymore, he doesn't really like how the numb feeling of being hit feels like. So he merely gets up and he slaps Bakugo in the face as hard as po possible, which makes Bakugo act as quirk and punch him in the stomach, leaving some square marks, but Midoriya doesn't really care, so he actively punches Bakugo in the face even more, while Bakugo is exploding all over his body with his punches, doing a flurry of punches, landing in his ribcage, his face, his eye, his, well, Everything. His arms, everything's being scorched. And the goons back up because they're thinking Bakugo's going way too far. He is, but no one's stopping him. And Midoriya just uppercuts him after he's very tired and exhausted. He just uppercuts him after having to deal with all those blows. Because Bakugo's too exhausted from using his quirk. So he gets uppercutted and he falls back down and he's on the ground. And he tries to get back up so he could fight Midoriya. But Midoriya just steps on his chest and just pushes him back down to the ground. And he looks to the side and sees that there's his desk and chair. He's in front of it. He picks up his chair and starts bashing Bakugo's face. And Bakugo's just scowling and anger in his gaze. Never really wore off. He didn't beg for it to stop for what seemed like hours. He didn't stop at all. He continuously kept on doing it until the, until the teacher grabbed his hand and said, You're expelled. And Midoriya looked at him and said, But if he beat me severely and I have more wounds, he's not expelled, is he? And he said, Well, he's not expelled because he's talented. You're nothing. You're just a useless Deku. And Midoriya just looks at him and says, Oh. I'll make sure you regret those words. And he walks away out of the school. And the principal that had just held on to the boy felt shivers. He didn't know why, but that actually affected him. And then he hears, well, an opening of a can. And then he sees a guy with sunglasses on in the back of the classroom. And... He looks back there, and he sees that he was watching the whole event, and he asks, so, what are you doing here, mister? And he said, nah, uh, uh You don't have to call me by my name. I don't want that little shit on the ground right there to know. I was looking at a potential candidate for a project of mine. And also, he has more of a complex aura around him. I don't think he's actually quirkless, and I think he might have made a mistake. And he smiles. The principal pales, because this man's predictions are never wrong. The last time he said someone made a mistake, they usually end up dying in a car accident, or they end up being viciously murdered. He could sense the auras of misfortune, of power, their hidden potentials. That's what this man could do. And he's saying he's going to have a bad time. So he pales. He tries to ask about more, but the guy with sunglasses disappears. 
But Dory is walking home. He decided to take the long way. He decided to take the long way. He's going under a bridge. And all of a sudden, he hears some type of sludge on the ground. It seems like it's bursting, about to burst out of somewhere. He looks behind him. He sees the manhole burst open. And this sludge monster appear out of it. His instincts immediately tell him to run. So he starts trying to run. But the sludge villain already appears right behind him. And says, you're not going anywhere, kid. I need your body as a meat suit. Manly because I didn't know that freak would be here. And he covers Midoriya in his slime. Going all around his body, into his lungs. Midoriya ends up just thinking, Wow, people always call me a monster, but I'm being killed by one. <laughs> wow, isn't this quite poetic? While his life is fading, his lungs are gasping for air. And he's thinking these thoughts. He's thinking, I never had a good life. Well, why? Why did it all end like this? Why couldn't anything meaningful happen? Why couldn't I become a hero? Why did they call me a monster? Am I really a monster? And if I am, why am I going to die like this? And another voice came out and said, You aren't. And he faded. All of a sudden, the sludge notices that he's not moving anymore. He's like, well, finally, my perfect meat suit. And he tries to go inside the corpse, but notices something. There's this dark figure coming out of its body, bursting through its chest. And this really long arm, which looks like it has a suit around it, with the gloves and fingers that look like knives coming out of it. Very sharp fingernails. And this long hand grabs the ground and starts coming out of Midoriya, pulling itself out of his very chest. This long man just peers out of him, and he's about nine feet tall. His eyes and face are completely covered by this mask. It has a painted smile on it, on half of it, but half of it's completely broken, and it shows menacing teeth that stretch all the way outside of its mouth of where its face should have been stretches all the way around the face and it has one red glowing eye with completely silver slitted pupils on the inside and it's staring at the sludge villain as if it was a predator staring at its prey and it has this grotesque flesh around him it's coming out of his suit all, everywhere. And it has mouths. The flesh has mouths coming out of it. And it's howling, begging for something to eat. And the sludge is terrified. He can't move. And he just walks slowly towards him while wobbling, saying, You, you, are mine. And he grabs onto the sludge. And all you could hear from the, out, from the under the bridge was screaming, No, no, don't, I'll do anything. And then you hear a wet splat to the ground. And then All Might appears. And he sees this monster over this villain who has reverted to his human form. And his head is grabbed by this very tall, disturbing man. This monster. And it's screaming, You are not a monster. I am. And he rips off the villain's head and starts biting onto it with its flesh coming out of its suit, eating the entire body. And All, All Might looks at this man and he says, it's a villain. Everything tells him, him that. It's not a villain, but it's a monster. He charges at it with a 100% smash. And all the villain does is, all the monster does is look at All Might and says, you no hero. You dead. And he disappears, and this made it all my confused. He disappeared in dark smoke, but he feels something in his ribs. He looks down and he sees this long hand going straight through his ribs with these fingers, these nails, these fingernails that are very sharp going into his ribs, piercing into his bone, fracturing it, and he's coughing up blood. 
He's looking at the villain, he suppose. No, the monster. The devil itself. And it's just smiling. It's looking very deep into his soul, saying, You die now. And before the villain, before the monster, lifted up its other hand, it's about to swipe at All Might's head. Midoriya woke up and said, No! And then the monster disappeared, and it went back into Midoriya. And Midoriya was wondering what just happened. Then All Might walked up to him and says, Kid, you have a lot of explaining to do. What is that quirk? And Midoriya has no idea what's happening. But you're going to have to find out next time. I hope you guys enjoy.